What's the bigger story here, that the Steelers remain undefeated or that Lamar continues to struggle? I think the story is that the Steelers remain undefeated because Lamar's struggles were relatively predictable. Uh, what did he finish on? He finished on 13 to 28 for 208 yards. What did I tell y'all coming into the game? It's a problem when he is forced to pass the ball. You know, obviously we know what an extraordinary runner that he is, but when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, the story right now, they are the only undefeated team in the National Football League. They are 7-0. and Big Ben Roethlisberger had a horrid first half, showed up in the second half, and handled his business, and the Steelers played smash-mouth football and were able to neutralize a nemesis in their division, which is the Baltimore Ravens. They were down 17-7 to at the half. I didn't expect them to come back and win this game, but that's exactly what they did. And when you look at the way that they're defending, when you look at the, the key stop with knowing that Lamar Jackson was going to probably run on that fourth and two, and John Harbaugh caught that play anyway, and ultimately uh, the Steelers neutralized them and shut them down. The play at the end of the game when Micah Fitzpatrick Patrick with his perfect timing uh, just just batted down that pass. Uh, I, I just love what I saw from their defense. Not so much offensively, but they did what they needed to do. They took advantage of opportunities. But the real reason that the Steelers are the stories uh, is the story outside of being undefeated is the fact that again that defense showed up. They are something special. We can't deny it. But more importantly, they got very very predictable results from Lamar Jackson, who we all know is electrifying. He's the reigning league MVP for a reason. But if you want to beat the Baltimore Ravens, make Lamar Jackson throw instead of run. And if you do that, your chances of beating the Baltimore Ravens elevates exponentially. Yeah, well, That's what we're looking at. That's what happened. Well, look, I first will give props to the Steelers because the world just feels right. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but the, the world feel, feels yeah, right does. when Pittsburgh is a powerhouse and their defense is the reason, right? Like, mm -hmm. things are right. That's how yep. it's supposed to be. So hats off to the Steelers, who have an argument for being the best team in football. Yeah. The real question is, is Mike Tomlin the best coach, coach in football, mm -hmm. considering New England struggles right now? Hats off to the Steelers. But I'll say this. They were 8-8 eight and eight with nothing under center last year. They get Roethlisberger back. I was figuring pencil them in at least for 10 wins, you know, 12 if things go right, mm -hmm. and it looks like they're going to have at least that. It's a big story, no doubt. The biggest story, guys, I'm sorry. Lamar Jackson is now, I want you to really consider these numbers, 24-1 and one against everyone else. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, you can't go 24-1. and one. It's not possible. 24 and 1 against everyone else, 0 and 6 in his biggest games. 0 and 6. Two losses in the playoffs, three losses to Kansas City, and now a loss to Pittsburgh when they've had Roethlisberger. In other words, when it's really the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those are clearly the six highest profile games he's played in. He's lost all six. How do you go from 24 and 1 in 25 games? You're basically undefeated, an impossibility in football, in the NFL, to going winless when they need you most. I don't want to hear about, well, when they turn him into a pocket passer, he can't get it done. What do you think? Only the Chiefs and only playoff teams and only the Steelers with Roethlisberger realize that? No. Is the Steelers' defense so much different than last year, or did they get their quarterback back? So why is it Lamar can't play well under those conditions? I think it has a little less to do with forcing him to become a pocket passer than he can't do it, and a little more to do with him not being able to do it with the chips on the line. Be very clear, this doesn't mean he can never do it, but so far in his NFL career, he has not been the same player when the light shines brightest, and to me, that is the biggest story. Oh man, my face is a little oily. You know, we don't have makeup. <laughs> oh, my. oh, I, I just picked this up, guys. I didn't even know what that was. I just, it was just laying around the house, man. That's crazy. It's crazy how that happens. Um, I agree with Max. You're gonna go first off. You're gonna say the Pittsburgh Steelers came out and they won the game, but then you got to look at the game, and that's how you get to Lamar Jackson. To it's the, to this being more about Lamar Jackson. The Baltimore Ravens rushed for 265 yards. The Baltimore Ravens held the Pittsburgh Steelers without a touchdown in the first half. So when you hear those two things, no touchdowns in the first half, you rush for 265 yards, you think 
that the Baltimore Ravens, who actually dominated the league's best run defense, wins the game. But they don't because Lamar Jackson turns the ball over three times. Two interceptions that are actually unexplainable. They're, you, you can't have a defense for them. You can't misread and go to and pick the wrong check down. You can't misread the drop of the linebacker and go to the second layer, not the first. That's a mental mistake by your quarterback. You can't not hold on to the ball in the red zone and allow Bud Dupree to get the ball out. So what's starting to happen now is in the biggest moments when teams are tightly matched, Lamar Jackson can't be the difference. So what we're seeing is in games, in those 25 games, Max, where the Baltimore Ravens are the better team, where the Baltimore Ravens are a better coach, where the Baltimore Ravens are more physical, where their rosters match up favorably against certain teams, they can win. They can blow those teams out because it doesn't come down to clutch moments from their quarterback. And I'm the biggest Lamar fan there is. I want to see him succeed. I want to see him win. But this is becoming a reoccurring theme. When it's the biggest games, when the lights are the brightest, Lamar Jackson doesn't perform. And it's not that he doesn't get numbers or the offense doesn't look good. It's that in situational football moments, he comes up short. And if you do that, your team can't win a Super Bowl. Your team, your team can't win a championship. And that's what this has come down to for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Can you win championships? And you can't with him playing that way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.